I feel like we should be on an episode of My Strange Addiction or something <laughs> like that. Because Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, they are objectively the worst Pokemon games of all time. But they are the best Pokemon games of all time. Like they are so much fun. So much so that we have to make a whole nother video about it. And we are obsessed. <laughs> I feel like obsessed is an understatement because Pokemon has literally infiltrated every single part of our lives. We had a whole bunch of Christmas videos planned. We haven't really done any of those. We've just like thought about Pokemon for the last couple of weeks. We were going through a playthrough of Kingdom Hearts on our Twitch and then we just got halfway through Kingdom Hearts 3 and then started playing Pokemon on there. Pretty much every part of our life that you could think of is Pokemon now. So we decided today, because we're positive people, right? Mm -hmm. We like to keep the, the mood up. We're gonna do 10 best things about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. None of this negativity, we all know. We all know that it's got crappy frame rates and stuff. Don't worry about that. We're here to tell you the best thing and we think we've saved the best thing for last. So make sure you stick around there. <laughs> Make sure that you complete your YouTuber Pokédex by <laughs> subscribing down below. And let's talk about the best things about Pokémon Scarlet and Violet. In our last Pokémon video, we failed to mention the multiplayer at all. Which is like a bit dumb because, I mean, there's two of us! It's we like the main way that we play it. Yeah, we love the multiplayer, but I guess we were just so excited we just forgot. So multiplayer works in a couple of different ways, but I think the first one that we'll touch on is the fact that you can invite people into your world. So if you remember back to Pokemon Sword and Shield and they had the wild area, you could run around and you could see other players, but they weren't actually in your world. But with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, you can create a lobby and invite three different people to come into your world with you, which is so cool. So it really is just playing the game in someone else's world. And some people might be like, eh, does that add a lot? Honestly, not really. But the fact I can be like, hey, Laura, let's go over here to Dragonite Mountain and <laughs> catch a Dragonite together right now. I love that. Sure, I can just look at her screen and tell her where to go. But the fact I can jump into her world and lead her there. I don't know, man. There's just something about seeing your friends there in your world. And you can't even do much together, but it's just... It's just so much fun with them just being there. Yeah. Just yeah. spending quality time together in each other's yeah. worlds. I just like being with you. <laughs> so cute. So the other main way that you can play multiplayer if you're not in a lobby together is by playing Terra Raid battles together. So if you can think back to Pokemon Sword and Shield where they had the max raid battles, they're somewhat similar, but with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's gimmick in it, which is terrestrializing. Terrestrializing isn't going to be on our top 10 best things because it's average. <laughs> yeah, it's not really our favorite thing, but the raid battles, that is where it's at. Exactly. So they take place in these giant crystals around the world. You run up to one. You can kind of, it's kind of like a who's that Pokemon thing. You have like a silhouette of the You're Pokemon. Right, if it's a good one, then you can say to your friends, or even people that you don't know. You can just uh, look for other players to help you join the raid battle. There's four players that can join and then you basically take down this big ass Pokemon. So I really like these terror raid battles because they almost give you the illusion that they're in real time. Yeah. Now, it is turn-based and you do have to wait for everyone to take their turn, but you don't have to wait for the next person to take their turn to choose what you're doing next. Mm -hmm. So it just gives this nice little illusion of it's all happening when you want it to happen. It and I does. think that is really cool. And my other favorite thing about them is that they actually can be really hard. Yeah, they're the, probably the biggest challenge in the whole game. Exactly. In a game that is pretty much known for being easy, it's nice to have a challenge. With the five or six star Terra Raid battles, they can be brutal. Yeah, actually. And you have to have pretty high level Pokemon in order to stand a chance. Mm -hmm. Walking around with your Pokemon. Whatever Pokemon you want, whenever you want. Think back to Heart Gold and Soul Silver where they first introduced this mechanic and the internet went wild. I went wild. I was like, what do you mean? I can have a Gengar just like following behind me, walking along. How cool is that? 
<laughs> and the let's go mechanic in Scarlet and Violet has just built on that so well. It definitely adds to the realism of your experience. <laughs> oh yeah, Which the is... realism of having a, a skeleton <laughs> crocodile shooting flames out of its mouth. Walking beside you though. Well, I mean, if I did have one, I would definitely take it for a walk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. You we take, take our cat for a walk. For a walk. Oh yeah. <laughs> He's do. a bit iffy on the lead at the moment, but eventually. We got him a new longer lead for Christmas yeah. this year though, so he should like that. <laughs> Don't tell him. <laughs> The Let's Go Walking feature actually incorporates a couple of different things in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, so you can evolve Pokemon that way, which I found really awesome, but also you can do the auto battles. Yes. The auto battles are so good. We talked about it the other week. You don't get as much EXP, but it's definitely worth it, and it takes a lot of the tediousness out of battling yeah, and grinding. Definitely. You know, in conclusion with the Let's Go Walking, who doesn't want your little pet? following you around the whole time. I think it's adorable. It is a no-brainer. My favorite part was when you have to take the little poo Pokemon for a walk. And it's like, it's like walkception. You're walking your little poo Pokemon while your little poo Pokemon is walking his little poo. <laughs> <laughs> Team Star raid battles are not just your regular old turn-based combat. They actually involve this auto battling thing that we just talked about. And you basically run into their base and you've got to auto battle a whole bunch of Pokemon. And I just love this so much because it's different. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> the evil teams were kind of getting a bit old, weren't they? And then eventually they weren't even evil anymore. Like Team Yell, I think is what it was called. That was just like, it just kind of seemed redundant and kind of pointless. It didn't really add anything to the experience. So I I'm so, it. yeah, yeah, it kind sucked. of sucked. But these ones are so much better. They've like completely reimagined the way that the evil teams work and they've introduced different mechanics and it has made it so fresh and so much more exciting. Yeah, the raid battles aren't exactly difficult at all. You basically go and you get 10 minutes to auto battle 30 of <laughs> Team Star's Pokemon. And look, I don't think we ever needed more than two minutes to no. complete that. So it is pretty easy. You can heal your Pokemon up halfway through but I, I just like it because it's something different. Exactly. You know, like forget gym battles, they're, they're fine. Like, you know, turn-based combat, that's cool. It's what we all know and love about Pokemon. But the fact that they're trying something new, I don't know, man, I just, I just really appreciate that. It's good. It's and it's good. fun. Yeah, it is fun. That's the main thing. Yeah. It's actually really, really fun. Exactly. Pokemon isn't exactly known for its story. It's an RPG, which, Automatically means it must have a good story, but for some reason Pokemon just doesn't. It's more about the Pokemons, you know? <laughs> but Scarlet and Violet, this one actually does a pretty decent job. So there are three main story quests in this game and they are all completely different and they all sort of intertwine at the end. But when you're playing it, it's like you have separate things to do. It's not like a regular Pokemon where it's so linear. You go here, here, here and here. So you've got the gym battles, obviously. Mm. Every Pokemon game has gym yeah. battles. Boring. Yeah. Gym battles, elite four. First an evil team that wants to take over the world on the way. Nah, nah, none of that. I'm in as there, but there's something more here. Exactly. So the evil team that you have to take out along the way is obviously Team Star. We talked a little bit before about how different it is, but Team Star also has its own story. And they're so fleshed out as well. It's not just like a side thought or something no. you like, Oh, look, Team Rocket's cutting off Slowpoke Tails while I'm in this town. No, you actually have to go out and actively try to defeat this evil team. And I actually felt really bad for them in the end. Yeah, there's a whole plot there that's actually really good. Yeah, and that's not the only really good plot because you've also got the Titan Quest, which sees you going out and defeating these massive versions of Pokemon in order to get a Herba Mystica Magical Herbs. Um, and that also has an absolutely incredible story. It's definitely my favorite part of the game. I was gonna say that, that is Laura's favorite for sure. She tried to take out all five Titan Pokemon before doing anything and, yeah. and kind of struggled because some of them are strong. Some of them are strong. I don't want to tell you what the story is, obviously, because I want you to experience it for yourself, but just know that you might cry. That's all. You figure it out pretty early. I think like after the second Titan Pokemon, you realize what's going on. But before that, it's like, you know, me as an adult, I was like, oh, 
there's some mystery in this Pokemon game. There is some mystery. I haven't figured it out straight away. How cool is that? <laughs> and we haven't even bought up the Great Crater. Mainly because I haven't actually got there because we've just spent like 50 hours running around the world <laughs> trying to collect all the Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. But there is this sense of mystery as well. We keep going back to that word mystery. Exactly. I feel like there's a lot of mysterious goings on here in the Paldea region. But yeah, the Great Crater, something weird going on there. It's end game stuff. Maybe we'll make another video talking about that later on. <laughs> I hope so. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> the school stuff though, that's okay. It's like, it goes back to the realism that we were saying before about the auto battles and walking with your Pokemon, just like in real life. School sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in school, kids. So Pokemon is obviously about the Pokemon. I feel like the new Pokemon designs are always a highlight of any new generation, but particularly these ones I feel are really good and they have answered some of the calls of Pokemon fans for a while now. Absolutely. So we now have a Scarab Pokemon. People have been asking for that for ages. We have a Narwhal Pokemon. People have been crying out for that. We have an evolution of Dunsparce. <laughs> Okay, that kind of sucks. <laughs> but I mean, it's there, I guess. It's there! <laughs> As usual, Pokemon lets us down a couple of times, you know? Ice creams, keys. Mm. Can't win them all! Exactly. Gotta catch them all. Don't have to have all good designs. <laughs> that should be the Pokemon motto. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta catch them all, don't have to love them all. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I like that a lot. <laughs> But as well as getting a whole bunch of new designs, we also got some evolutions of old designs. Oh, oh yeah, I want to talk about this one okay. because these are some of my favorite Pokemon <laughs> in the whole game. King Ambit is Bishop's evolution. And oh my God, I love the like King Samurai chess, Better. like sword on the head. That guy looks sick. And can we just take a minute to appreciate that the year is 2022 and we now have a primate evolution. And it is so rad. Its lore is amazing. Its design is amazing. Honestly, I think, yeah, those two Pokemon might just be my favorite in the whole game. They are. Sorry for interrupting. What are your favorite Pokemon in the whole game? I just want to give a shout out to Cerulege. Yeah, Cerulege. Yeah. Cerulege is super cool. I actually really love both. I do prefer the Violet one, but the Scarlet one is also awesome. Uh, right? Armor yeah. Age. Yes. Yeah. And I also just want to give a special mention to Belly Bolt. Originally, I was not a fan of his design, but then I realized that he looks like a Squishmallow. <laughs> and now I love him. You can't go wrong with Squishmallow, can you? No, you can't go wrong. <laughs> Missed opportunity. I should have called him like Bolt Mallow or like... Oh, Bolt Mallow. Squish Bolt. Squish Bolt. Electric Squish. <laughs> Tell me that he does not bear a resemblance. <gasps> Do you think that Squishmallow could collab with Pokemon? Oh, if they don't, that's an opportunity that is missed. Coridon and Maridon. I was not a fan of these guys when they first revealed them. Like, ah, oh, Pokemon is a bike now. <laughs> I, I don't know. I was just, honestly, I thought I was just over the Pokemon franchise at one point there. I was like, this is lame. I don't like it. But now they're in a list of 10 best things about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. So I have clearly come around. It's not just Laura's influence. <laughs> no, I really like the fact that you can ride on the legendary Pokemon. I always love like actually being able to ride the mounts and not just going into your menu, getting a HM slave that has to take up a space in your party, pressing fly and then, or like pressing, I don't know. Surf. Exactly. And then it just like, goes black and happens. I like actually seeing it happen. And I really like the fact that the legendaries in this game are kind of intertwined with the story and they're with you from the beginning. Like, I love Maridon. They have a lot more riding on them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Sorry, that was really bad. But you know, there's, there's a lot more to do with the legendary Pokemon in this game. So they definitely take more of a center stage. I think my favorite thing about them is that they just really help with the progression of the world. Mm. So when you go and beat the Titans, your ride Pokemon or your legendary gains a new ability mm -hmm. like an extra high jump or the ability to glide. 
and that in turn allows you to get to different areas of the map. So yeah, the world is open, but you're not really able to access everything straight away mm -hmm. because your legendary Pokemon hasn't got all of its abilities yet. And I really, I think that's a really smart way of doing that, of pushing people in a certain direction yeah, in the world. It is. And yeah, I do like that it's intertwined with like your friend, your friend Pokemon. Yeah, you have a friend? Yeah. I've heard some people say that they would rather it be a, like a whole bunch of different ones, like it was in Sun and Moon and in Legends Arceus. But I don't know, I, it's fine, it's good. They kind of like weren't really yours though, you know, like in yeah. Arceus, they were like, you just summoned them, they were their own Pokemon. But I like the fact that Maridon and Caridon are your Pokemon and also that they don't have to take up a space in your party. You have a connection to them. I do, I truly do. Also, somebody pointed out on Twitch last night that Maridon's wheel kind of like goes into its butt and I can't unsee that. What about Caridon? Does his, does he have a butt Look, wheel? he just runs around, okay? So it could oh, just be yeah. his butt. So yeah, that's true. Just saying, you picked Violet, you chose butt wheel. Butt wheel. Butt wheel. He's a machine. Butt wheel. He probably doesn't. Butt wheel. Butt wheel. Butt wheel. <laughs> I chose Scarlet, obviously. <laughs> Sorry. Is that Did you want to say anything? I don't have anything to say after that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so there is heaps of quality of life improvements in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, but by far the best one is being able to remember moves. You don't have to go around and find some random guy in order to change your Pokemon's moves anymore or remember an old one. You can just go into your menu, press summary, you've got a list of all the moves and then you can just change them. It is, it is honestly such a good improvement and I can't believe it took us so long to get here. Okay, so we're going from our smallest point to our largest point. The open world. This is arguably the best thing about this game. Full stop. We as Pokemon fans have been begging for this for so long. And it is here and it is beautiful. It is glorious. It is everything I ever wanted. The map is actually so huge and it kind of has to be because there's a lot of Pokemon to fit in here and there's different biomes, different places in which you can find different Pokemon. And it actually really gives you the freedom to go around and explore. And I want to as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I always want to be like, oh, what's that little beach down there? There might be a new Pokemon. And there, there. will be, there yeah. will be. Yeah, nine times out of 10, there's something you haven't discovered down there. And it's worth going to every single place you can. Mm -hmm. Again, that's why we haven't finished the game yet because we are just exploring everywhere. And I love that. And you are definitely rewarded for your exploration. Like if you go and find a tiny little pond on top of a mountain, that's gonna have different Pokemon than you can find anywhere else. There's a little island that has Dragonites on it. Yeah, so it really like pushes you to explore the entire world. And I love that about it. It makes me really want to complete my Pokedex for the first time ever. Yeah, it does. It also, yeah, drives you to that gotta catch them all tagline of Pokemon, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Because exploring equals catching more Pokemon, catching more Pokemon equals exploring. It's just so well intertwined. Not to mention that the world is just really nice, so I kind of want to know what's on top of that mountain. It's really beautiful, The yeah. dragon are on top of the mountain, by the way, not on the island, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I only went up there because I was like, I wonder what's up there. It looks nice. Mm. There might be a nice view. Oh my God, there's a dragon up there. And the fact that you've got the freedom to do this as well, like, I love that, man. I just, routes, route one, route two, route, how boring. You go from A to B, you go to gym leader, you go from C to D. Uh, I mean, it's, it's fine, it's good. I love Sword and Shield, I love all the other Pokemon games, but I am never going back. No, this is the way that Pokemon should be for the rest of eternity. It is, and I really hope it is. So the open world is just so beautiful and full of Pokemon and full of life that it really makes me want to explore it. And that is the best part of the game, in my opinion. But I hear you guys asking, Tom, Laura, you said you were saving the best for last. What could possibly be better than the open world? Well, let me tell you. Innovation. 
Pokemon is trying something new. Okay, it didn't quite work out like we'd all hoped. It's definitely not a 10 out of 10 game. It has a lot, a lot of issues. But the fact that they're trying, they're pushing the Pokemon franchise forward, that deserves a slot in its own. That is the single greatest thing about Scarlet and Violet. It's new. So Pokemon has pretty much been Pokemon for its entire life. It's always followed the same formula, always done the same thing. But Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is completely different. It has echoes of what Pokemon was and what Pokemon is and at its core, but it adds so much more to it and it makes it feel so fresh and so new. Despite all of its issues, it's really such a fun game and it is so easy to look past those issues once you get involved in it. And so really, it just makes me excited for the future because it can only go up from here, you know? Yes, what are we getting in the next Pokemon games? What is there? There is so much to look forward to with this idea. Just keep the graphics the same, work on the frame rate, work on all the bugs and just like give us this again. And honestly, you, like there is such a win right there. Oh yeah. There is an easy W for the Pokemon company. We don't expect whiz bang realistic Gran Turismo graphics. Mm -hmm. We just want a fun game that doesn't have as many bugs as this one. But this game is fun. Yeah. You know what? Is that gonna be cheeky number 11? Let's do cheeky number 11. It's fun. <laughs> it is so much fun. That is actually the single best thing about Pokemon Scarlet. Special Bar. mention. Mm -hmm. The fact that this game is just fun. It's buggy, it's broken, it sucks. I know, I get it. But I definitely recommend just giving it a try. Just try it. You Trust me. It. You might love it. Yeah. You might be like us on an episode of My Strange Addiction. So I think that we've made our thoughts pretty clear about how we feel about this game. We are obsessed with it. It has taken over every fiber of our beings, but we want to know how you feel about it. Let us know your favorite things about the game in the comments below. Yeah, maybe you guys could leave a top 10, but also maybe a worst 10, a bottom 10, yeah. the least good things, the least good things, the worst things about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And maybe we'll do a video on that as well. I think it is important to bring attention to some of these bad things. And there are things there that we don't like, like the school and stuff like that. So let us know also if you'd like to actually see that. This was a video, as much as we say it's the 10 best things, they're kind of just our favorite things. So don't judge us too much. We'll be back next week with another Nintendo related video. Don't forget to complete that Pokedex. <laughs> Subscribe down below. We'll see you next week, friends. Bye. Much love. <laughs> really sorry about that whole part. Will. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I'm in trouble. <laughs> I'm just gonna cry myself to sleep tonight, that's all. I'm sorry. <laughs> I need to go form Team Star because I've been bullied so hard. <laughs>